How's it going everybody? Welcome to the channel. This is Big Day Dave and this is a map tour for a new mod map to Farming Simulator 22 called The Mythical Woods. And we're going to start with the description from the mod hub and it reads, Welcome to The Mythical Woods. This is a fictional map where there is mythical things happening on the map and there is some white orbs that you can collect that are floating in random, random areas on the map at night. The map features about five sell points. All in-game products are sellable and Platinum Edition fill types also. P.S. For Platinum Edition fill types, the DLC is required. Seven fields for any sort of farming. A bunch of forest and empty land for forestry and building. Some trees by Pixel Farm and Oscar8599. A village where you can mow people's lawns, some people walking in the old village. In winter, you can plow snow in the roads. Eight collectibles that you can find only at nighttime. A sheep farm with custom buildings. New fill types that can be used in many production buildings into the map. A mine where you can dig up new materials like coal, gravel, clay, etc. Hope that you enjoy the map and look out for those white orbs at night. There are no mods required for this map, and this map was created by Carl TG and is 333.16 megabytes to download. And if we take a look at the map, this is what it looks like. We start out here on the southern portion of the map, uh, just kind of out in the middle of nowhere. We start out by owning farmland number one, which is broken up in two sections. This little area down here, which is where your main house is located. And then here, where the remainder of your sheep farm is located. Area uh, Land on the map does vary in price, but you do get some really good options. So we'll start out with some of the fields here. Some of the fields are absolutely dirt cheap. $4,000, $11,000. You got this one here for $7,000. Pretty much every single one of these fields by themselves is about less than twelve dollars to $15,000. It's super, super cheap. And then you get some of these kind of grassland areas, 63,000, 55,000, 90,000, 77,000, you got 76,000. Even down here, you got 188,000. You get a pretty good range, but then you also get forestry areas, 709,000 for the big forestry area right there. You get another one here for 223,000. There's a mine located here on farmland number five for 365,000 with items that you can pick up. You got this forestry bit up here where there's a big swampy area and a good chunk of forest for 661,000. A bunch of forestry right here, almost nothing but for 388. You get a really good selection here on this map. You do start with an animal pen. It is a sheep barn. Contracts are available on this map. No productions to start out with. And there are collectibles, eight of them be precise. And again, according to the description, they're only fine. Uh, you can only locate them at night. So they're these little white orbs that you're going to have to look out for. So be on the lookout in the middle of the night. Now, there are mods specific to this map. Starting out with the buy menu, there's nothing under here, but under the build menu. We take a look under buildings and sheds. We scroll to the right, you will see the mythical woods there at the bottom right hand corner for 40,000, the farm shed there. And if we take a look under silos, you'll see another one here for the farm silo. Under silo extensions, there is nothing there. There is nothing under containers and nothing under tools, but under farmhouses, you do have the little cabin there for 55,000. Now for productions, we do get several additional productions here for mods specific to this map. We get a cement and asphalt factory, we get a crude oil production, we get gold production as well as a brick factory. And all of these require different fill types that you can get either on the map uh, at the quarry or at the mine, I should say, or at one of the productions already placed down and we will show that off later on. Now, under animals, there's absolutely nothing listed under animals. Under decorations, there is nothing under decorations. And then lastly, under landscaping, we do have several additional painting swatches, but nothing under trees or plants. So if we take a look, we're going to go ahead and hop into the uh, Mahindra here. We're going to turn around and we're going to go first to our main log cabin, which is, again, separate from the rest of the farm. 
And once we get there, we're going to first go over all of our starting equipment and all that stuff, and then we will actually start making our way around. But this is our starting at home right here. Let's go ahead and take a look at our starting equipment since we are here on our starting farm. On the buy menu under owned items, we have under medium tractors a McCormick X8 631 VT drive, a Fent 724 Vario, and a Massey Ferguson 7S210. Uh, under harvesters, we have a Deutz Far top liner 490H, cars, the Mahinder Retriever. Under trailers, we have a Rudolph uh, DK 280RL. Header for the Deutz Far. Under Power Harrows, we have the K brand HR4040. Under Cedars, the K brand Venta 4030. Under Mowers, we have the Cavernland 4140L. Under Tedders, the Pottinger Alpen Hit 4.4H. Under Wind Rowers, we have the Pottinger Top 342. Under Forge Wagons, we have the Pottinger Boss Alpine 251. Trailer, a header trailer for the Deutz Far. And then lastly, under Weights, we have the Fent 3300 Weight. So that is it. So let's go ahead and head inside here, open the door. And starting out right across from us is the sleep trigger. Next to that is the wardrobe trigger. And that is it for this little cabin. You do get a little light switch. Let's show that off real quick. It's right here on the wall. So you can pop that on and pow! You get pretty good lights in, whoops, good lights in here. Now let's go ahead and head out we're going to see the rest of the farm right at the very end of the tour. Um, so we're going to go down here to the south. I was looking on here a little bit ago, and this is kind of the most optimal route that I was able to find. So we're going to head down south first and take in all the kind of sell points, production points, and all that that's located down here. So over here to my right... Directly in front of me is the train silo. You have the output for the train silo for your trailers. Input for your trailers is right here. You have your input and output for the train right there. And a rent train trigger right there. Hop back in. Get turned around. And then we follow this. Whoops, oops, oops, oops. That's the only problem with this... Uh, Mahinda Retriever is... I cannot drive it. <laughs> so we keep heading out to the east. We're going to take in our next point of interest. Tucked away just over here. This is the sawmill. Now this is just a sell point. This is not a production point. As best as I can tell. We have our inputs right there with our wood sell trigger right here. So what I am honestly quite confused about is you do have this little checker box right here i've looked around and i do not for the life of me cannot find a wrench or anything like that that would indicate that this is a production point i've looked and looked i haven't seen one now one thing i will also point out is that if we take a look at the map we started out here by the uh by the road here came back to the house came back down and around to the train silo and the rent train trigger came all the way over here now if you look here where it says sawmill it's just a sell point indicator. It's not a uh, production point, which would look something like this. So it's one of those that this just leads me to believe that this is just a sell point. So hop over, get back in the Mahindra over here. We'll backtrack just a little ways. And then make a left. Oh, 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 oh. Gotta get that power slide going. So we'll follow this around. And there's a little crossing. What is going on here? A little crossing right over here. And now we'll follow this all the way back to the southern portion of the uh, to the railroad tracks here. And we'll take in all the points of interest that are tucked away over in this area here. You can see them starting to come up in the distance over there. Start to slow down here. So right here we have the gas station right there. 
We have a repair trigger right here and a shop trigger right here. We'll hop back into the Mahindra. Head just a little bit further down. And here we have the animal dealer. Now you can come to this location and use this icon or the icon at your main pen and pastures uh, that you already have installed in the map directly. If you use this icon directly though, you will incur an additional fee. That fee is associated to a delivery fee. Essentially the animal dealer is taking the animals from this location and delivering them for you to wherever you have your pens and pastures located on the map. Now that fee can vary depending on the animal, depending on the age of the animal. There's a bunch of different factors, but it can get pretty expensive. Now we only have sheep available, but you can see for baby sheep, $30 per sheep, and then for adults, $50 per sheep. Now, if you want to save that delivery fee, bring an animal trailer to this location, park within this box here, and then use the animal dialog to load into your trailer. Once you load into your trailer, you save on that delivery fee. You have to deliver the animals yourself, but other than that, you're good to go. Now over here, is the storage bay cell point right there you got the train going right on by good timing now we're gonna backtrack just a little ways and head back to uh, where we started out but we're gonna go beyond that point to take in our next point of interest we can cross right here and then continue to head in this direction now you can see that this is really a very good example of a pioneer or a survival map um, the survival map uh, I would denote is kind of a big time forestry very forestry heavy this one I would kind of lean away from that title though because even though it yeah there's a lot of forestry there's still a lot of grass work that can be done on this one there's also uh, several fields on here so it's not like a t typical like survival map but it is very minimalist and I do like it I do like uh, what I've seen so far right here we have a production point this is the stone factory you can purchase this for ninety seven thousand dollars we'll go ahead and purchase it because you can see stones diesel and water in and you get things like coal lime limestone dirt gravel sand and iron and stone powder you get a whole bunch of different outputs from this particular production point we have our inputs right here and our outputs on the other side right over here and now all these different inputs i'm sorry all these different outputs that we can have from this area remember how we had the uh production points and the ones specific to this map you've got the cement and asphalt factory which takes uh all the various bits and pieces i just said there to give you cement and asphalt you also have the crude oil production which needs sand and water you also have the gold production and you have the brick factory so all those various bits that come out as an output from here can then later on fill in those other uh, production points so that is a really nice uh, thing now none of those other production points that I just pointed out are actually pre-placed onto the map you're gonna have to you know purchase them and place them down yourselves so now if we follow this road off in this direction Continue to follow this up and around to our last point of interest, which is located just down the road over here. We have one of the fields that are on the map coming up right here to my right. We'll make it right here. And here is your main starting field right here. So it is full of wheat, it's ready to harvest. And this is your actual starting farm. Now, we'll stop right here. Our sheep barn is located right here. Have room for 25 sheep. And feed goes in here. Wool will spawn right here. And you have a silo. Bit of storage, and that's it. This is all your main starting equipment besides the uh, Mahindra that was located where you first started. But that's it. That is pretty much the entirety of the map. Now it's time to let you know what I think, 0 to 5 scale as per usual. And I'll 
come right out and say it. I really like this map. I really, really like this map. Its color palette is very nice. It's very toned down. You got these kind of wildflowers. Now, one thing I did notice is you kind of have some weird pedestrian splines right here. Some of the pedestrians will walk through the fence right there and uh, kind of interact weirdly with their environment. But just the, the map itself, this little stretch right here that you can kind of do whatever it is you want. You got the construction here. I, I mean, just, I like it. I just think that this is a very good example of what can be done with a kind of minimalistic map. This kind of pioneer map is what I'm going to try and start calling these style of maps. Where there are some fields, um, but it's very minimal in the ways of field. It's mainly meant to be a survival map, but it's not like a pure survival map such as a uh, no man's land style map where there is no contracts or anything like this one has contracts but it's just very very small there's not much going on but the color palette very toned down very very nice in my opinion i love the little wildflowers that are growing just about everywhere up here it just makes it feel very untouched and very kind of toned down and, and like very out in the middle of nowhere very wilderness feel um, the undulations, the landscape on this map, I think is absolutely marvelous. This little area right here with the kind of swamp that you have up in the northern portion of this, uh, of this wooded area, absolutely love that. You come out in this area here and you have the mining area. Uh, and you can see all the various products that are just sitting here waiting for you to be able to, to take advantage of. Now, I will say the kind of layout of this is kind of lackluster in my opinion because you got just a big pile of, of I think that's clay, and you have several other different just piles of other material. Now, I understand why it was done like this. It's one of those that you can only do so much with the kind of materials and stuff. You can just kind of plop them down and that's about it. But, I don't know, just how it's all kind of sectioned off and all this stuff just makes it kind of seem unnatural to me but i mean very very small uh complaint very small and, and the grand scheme of things it's it's on the radar but not so much to where it's going to be like oh such a big off-putting kind of thing but other than that i i just really like this map i think that this would be a very good example of what can be done with a survival style map and it offers so many different uh, paths that you can take. You can, you can dive head at first into the various productions. You can work on just doing things like grass work. You can do f field work. You can do a bunch of logging. There's so much in the ways of logging on this map. And yeah, I just, I really like it. And especially the terrain, the undulations, the gentle hills. Uh, there are some placeable areas, as you can see, we're passing by one right here. Um, but it's just one of those where I just think it's a really good example of a survival map without being so, for lack of a better word, boring. Um, there are times when these survival maps can be just n nothing to really look at besides trees or besides open grasslands. This one I feel is a good combination of the two, and I really like that. So what would I give this? Zero to five rating as per usual. I would probably go with a solid, solid four, maybe even a four and a half. I do really, really like this. And it's got these little, little itty bitty features that if you're not, uh, if you're just kind of wandering around like I'm doing at the moment, you know, you've got these kind of transformer station that's here. It's just pure decoration. It doesn't have to be here, but it's nice that it is here. It makes it feel real. Like there's actually like been some effort and details put into this that again, most survival maps, most pioneer maps like this, you don't get that level of detail. You just kind of get, you know, here's grass, here's trees, have at it. And yeah, this one, I can actually feel like there's been effort put into it. You get the custom buildings, the custom uh, pens, well, pen and pasture. You only get the one pasture for the sheep there. But like I said, it just it feels like effort has been put in, and it just feels like a, a someplace that you could actually go and visit and actually 
really be a part of. Now, there is this little farm here that uh, did a kind of appear on my radar, but when I bought this area, um, it was something that just nothing popped up. So I didn't think that was anything worth kind of mentioning for the tour here. But before we go, let me go ahead and show where we've been. So we were here at the sawmill, came back around over here. We saw the gas station, the shop trigger repair trigger, the animal dealer, and then the storage bay cell point. We then came back around, up and over to this area here, the stone factory, and then up and around to the main starting farm here. Now, we'll go ahead and buy this just to reconfirm, but... Went ahead and bought it. Is this a functioning silo? I, yeah, that's definitely not a functioning silo. This is just basically a a de decorative field, a decorative uh, space. But you can't sell any of this after buying. It's just kind of here. So that's kind of a disappointment. I would love for this to actually be functional and have some kind of purpose to it. But as it sits right now, it's just kind of here. So... That's a little disappointing, but at the end of the day, again, small, small uh, gripe at the at the end of the day. But really like it. Four and a half out of five. I uh, I think this is a great map. But I hope you enjoyed this map tour. If you did, please show me by liking, sharing, subscribing, following, commenting, doing all the things. The algorithm enjoy you doing the shows you're engaged with the channel, enjoying the content. And that being said, I hope you have a fantastic day. Take care.